And now, and now, it's Boomer Life, lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Welcome to Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. I'm George Gordon on Boomer Life today. We're talking about the latest innovations in hearing. We've all heard the jokes about people who can't hear. There's been all kinds of them. But the people who have hearing problems and the people who are living with them uh, or even their friends, it's not funny. A lot of problems that could be solved very easily, and we're going to tell you about some of the ways that it can be done so easily. We're going to speak about the inner workings of the ear from an expert perspective, and we'll offer real solutions for those who suffer hearing loss. Joining us in studio, registered audiologist Dr. Ted Veneman. Welcome, Ted. Hey, All nice right. to be here. Dr. Ted, now before we get into the topic of hearing loss, why not give us some background on yourself and on Next Gen and Mainland Hearing. Oh, okay. I, great companies have been very busy here in the Lower Mainland, and they made big differences for people's mm -hmm, lives. Yeah, Next Gen uh, is mainly uh, on the island and in the interior, and Mainland Hearing, which is associated with Next Gen, is here on the Lower Mainland. And the two uh, uh, ha have been in existence for the last couple of years, and they have got about 35 clinics, all told. As for me, I'm just a guy who lives in a van down by the river. <laughs> I went to uh, studied audiology at Western Washington in Bellingham, and uh, then went further and uh, studied at the University of Oklahoma for my PhD in this field. And I, uh, so I'm an audiologist registered here in the province, and I was working with NextGen. I used to run a shop in Victoria, one of their outlets. So uh, yeah, audiologists are, are like optometrists, but only for the ear. And uh, go ahead. Well, you know what I was. Uh we were talking a little bit before the show started that uh, the audiologist is perhaps not the sexiest <laughs> of uh, the medical expertise that, uh, that, that people get into, uh -huh. but it is, it's very important, um, especially for people later in life. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a fascinating background as a professor. Mm -hmm. I think you were telling me you've been all over the States and uh, back in, in and started up a course in, in Southern Ontario. Yep. Yep. I started a two-year college training program at Conestoga College in Kitchener. Now, the, the hearing field is similar to optometry in some ways. The optometrist is a university-trained doctor of, of, of eyes and, and uh, not surgery, but of, of, of vision. And an optician is a college-trained graduate who works with optometry and opticians fit glasses and lenses and stuff and um, in our field the audiologist is the university trained person in Canada and audiologists require a master's degree from either UBC or Western in Ontario or University of Ottawa various places like that Dalhousie in Nova Scotia and the hearing instrument practitioner has a two-year college diploma and uh, they graduate from various college programs that offer that. So that's the kind of program I started at Conestoga College in Kitchener, was a two-year college diploma program to train hearing instrument practitioners. And what's the difference between the two? Hearing instrument practitioners test adults. They're limited to the adult population, which, by the way, is 95% of the people who require hearing aids. An audiologist has more training and also can test infants and do specialized kind of testing, brain waves, and, and you know, that works more with physicians and diagnosing the problem, the site of lesion, as they say. But both in common test hearing, both fit prescribe and fit hearing aids. Both are licensed to do so in the province of BC. And both are adequate and great for serving the adult hearing, hearing impaired population. Now the hearing impaired population, yeah. uh, we tend to think of, and I, and I might be dating myself a, a bit here, of the old grandparent uh, with the big Victrola <laughs> earpiece up to the ear, and uh, and that's the only way that they could mm -hmm. uh, connect. Yep. Uh, it it is a problem. Eyesight is often uh, picked up in testing or the. Yep. the right away and mm -hmm. even in the earliest uh, stages of yeah. like even kindergarten yeah hearing not so much no hearing and i say that because you can use the old adage hearing loss is invisible hearing is invisible and people believe what they see and you can't see hearing loss and so it tends to get swept under the rugs vision loss you you see the person stumbling or having a lot of trouble seeing <clears throat> it's much more obvious hearing involves communication 
uh, the first and and vision doesn't that much. Vision is for the environment. Hearing is for communication between people. Helen Keller said blindness cuts people off from things. Hearing loss cuts you off from other people. And truer words couldn't be spoken. I mean, the vision loss tends to hit at age 40. Your arms aren't long enough to see the page. You can't see things close up. Right. They, hearing loss tends to hit at around 65. And I call it the trouble with treble. You start losing high pitch hearing sensitivity. And when you can't hear the highs, you have trouble hearing not that people are talking. You have trouble hearing what they're saying. And you know why that is? Because they can't hear the consonants, the letters S, F, C, H, CH, K, T. And all words have a vowel. You've only got five vowels in the right. English language, so vowels aren't worth very much. They just carry a word. But if you're saying stuff like fat, hat, bat, sat, cat, they all have ah, ah, but what makes them different is the and it's those high pitches that are gone. And so the person says, I can hear, but young people just mumble today. They're just not speaking clearly. I can hear, but I can't distinguish what they said. And the word for that is presbycusis. And it sounds just like Presbyterian. And that's the church of the elders, as opposed to the deacon. Presbyopia, your arms aren't long enough to see the page. Hits you at age 40. Presbycusis, hearing loss in the elderly. Presby is the Greek word for elder. It's, uh... I find it almost terrifying uh, uh -huh. when I start to think about the number of uh, kids in school these days. And it goes yeah. back to, you know, I, I can say our time. Mm -hmm. uh, the quote-unquote, the dummies. Mm-hmm. You know, they just obviously, they're, they were stupid, you know. They'd sit in the <laughs> class and they, they'd fail all their tests. And, uh -huh. and a lot of the time it was because they didn't hear the words. That could very well be. And that's, that's, that is a problem that can happen in schools where the teacher or educators aren't recognizing. They'll, they'll think that the person has learning disabilities or is being willfully disobedient or just isn't listening. And the first thing to do is get the hearing checked. I mean, it's kind of like, duh, check it out. We'll try to rule that out first. And, you know, hearing loss can, you know, there's infant screening programs. Babies are tested, you know, in hospitals these days. I mean, right away. You want to screen because for hearing loss, because if you're not hearing, you're not going to acquire language. And if you're not acquiring language, you're going to have problems, of course. So hearing is an unsung sense, and vision seems to take the lion's share of attention in society. And this, yeah, go ahead. Well, and, the, yeah. uh, you know, I, first of all, I want to remind you that you're listening to Boomer Life on CL 650. George Gordon here, and we're talking about the dramatic effects of hearing loss and solutions that you can find with next-gen hearing and mainland hearing. And we're talking in the studio today with Dr. Ted Venema. And you can get more information as you start to pick up on what we're talking about right here, and you want more information, at nextgenhearing.com and mainlandhearing, all one word, dot com. Let's not forget about that. Let's talk about the difference between something like glasses mm -hmm. and and something to help your hearing. I yeah. mean, when we're kids, you know, you see them with the plastic glasses, yeah. that uh, the, the rims that don't break, and, uh -huh. you know, they got like uh, a Coke bottle bottoms lenses, <laughs> but, you know, you, you know that you have to go through that. Yeah. But there's a stigma yeah. about wearing that there's kind a, of a Yeah, there's a huge difference between vision loss and hearing loss. And people know so much more about the eye. The public does. Everybody knows that the, the eye being round, light goes through the, the opening of the eye, and it has to get focused on the back of the eye called the retina. And the retina of the eye, in one sentence, changes light into electricity. And electricity is the language your brain understands. 95% of vision loss means light isn't properly focused on the retina. So you buy glasses to refocus the light properly upon an intact retina. Then God's in his heaven and all's well with the world. Hearing loss is different. With hearing loss, it's like someone went and scratched the back of your eyes. <laughs> and now, go ahead and focus the light. How do you, how do you like me now? You know, with 95% of hearing loss is damage to the inner ear or cochlea. Now, cochleos is the Greek word for snail shell. This little snail shelled organ is about as big as your pinky, the tip of your pinky. And it's got thousands of little hair cells in it. And those hair cells are like the, in quotes, the retina of the ear. They change sound into electricity so that the brain can pr process it. 
And in 95% of hearing loss, that's what's damaged. With age, it, the hair cells in the cochlea themselves become damaged. Uh, with noise-induced hearing loss, the second most common cause, and by the way, the most preventable cause of hearing loss. You know, from the young people in their cars with a boom, boom, boom. Well, they're going to be clients very soon because they're going to have trouble with treble. Noise kills off treble as well. We'll so, talk about that yeah. coming up in uh, just a little bit, a uh, little bit later in the yeah. show. Uh, and coming up next, we'll get into more specifics about hearing loss, early detection and why that early treatment can make such yeah. a huge difference. This is Boomer Life on CIL 650. Canada's only weekly radio show dedicated to the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CIL 650.